Thank you, so you can start. Thank you very much. Um, so I'll be uh, briefly and very quickly presenting uh, an open domain uh, question answering system that we uh, developed in a uh, project which is called the uh, Enrich for All project. Um, and this uh, QA system is, uh, is supposed to uh, be very practical and answer questions from uh, interested citizens that have all sorts of questions about everyday uh, administration tasks and uh, well in fact this is uh, what the project is about is uh, concerned with lowering the uh, language barriers for online services and public administration procedures um, and we are using a uh, an, uh, industry provided uh, chatbot which is uh, driven by uh, transform models uh, and uh, we use that chatbot to uh, help with the uh, interaction uh, of the citizens with the, uh, with the public uh, administration. And the chatbot is also supposed to uh, uh, work in multiple languages using the uh, European Commission e-translation API. And uh, using this API, we can um, everyone can chat with the bot. Uh, that was trained in a uh, specific language, but the question comes in uh, some other language. So, by means of uh, translation, we can use the, um, the target model uh, with the uh, different input uh, uh, language. Um, so, yeah, in a nutshell, this is the project. Uh, this is what the project is about. Um, it, uh, it was supposed to um, bring interested uh, public uh, institutions to um, help citizens uh, by. Uh, uh, enable uh, enabling chat and um, smart chat or um, uh, AI driven chat uh, with the um, interested citizens. Um, uh, well, we, uh, the project is one year in now, um, and the uh, a partial, let's say, um, finding is that um, no one is really interested. So. <laughs> we are uh, um, eagerly uh, looking for. Uh, Romanian institutions to come into the project, but they are not very interested. So, and this is why we um, we sought to uh, develop a uh, a free and open source uh, alternative to that uh, uh, driven uh, AI driven chatbot, which costs something. And this is what the uh, uh, today's uh, presentation is uh, is uh, actually about. Um, for um, Testing purposes, we had to choose one domain. So one hot uh, hot topic was the uh, COVID nineteen uh, pandemic, um, and we chose that because the topic is very volatile. Um, with new research, things uh, facts are changing. Um, well, hopefully they are uh, not changing anymore, or uh, we can't forget about it. But uh, in any case, uh, it was a very interesting topic to uh, to test our QA system with. Um, we call it open domain um, because it only needs the input question from the user. It's a question, it's not a query, so it has to, uh, 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 it has to provide the um, predicate and the arguments. And uh, uh, we are using uh, NLP tools to um, parse that question to uh, uh, predicate and arguments. And um, yeah. So it's also the main because it only takes the question and it will highlight uh, possible answers to that question using a, um, a web search engine. And uh, even though it was developed for COVID-19, the pipeline is pretty, um, um, is a uh, language independent and topic uh, independent, uh, provided that you have the right corpora and the right uh, uh, question and answer, uh, answer data set, you can, uh, train the pipeline from, uh, from scratch to uh, answer questions in a new domain or topic. Um, briefly about the architecture, um, it works in uh, Romanian for now, but uh, can be adapted for other languages. It takes the input question, um, it processes it, uh, process it with a um, text processing platform, um, are using Petrolin for uh, Romanian, um, it does, um, it takes the question, it uh, breaks it into tokens, and it does plus tagging. Uh, we need a um, uh, grammatical categories to um, extract nouns, adjectives, and verbs. 
uh, to form a query for our uh, chosen uh, uh, web search engine. Uh, and the query generation can take two forms. Uh, you can simply uh, put in the whole question as a query for them. Or what we did, uh, we, um, we took all of the, uh, what we call a content word, that is a noun, verb, uh, adjective, or bad word. And uh, you can create a set of, of uh, terms from the question. And you can, uh, <clears throat> you can take a union from uh, those words and their variants without diacritics. And that's because the Microsoft Bing search API does not care um, much about the diacritics. So it, uh, it will index um, sentences, uh, domain sentences with diacritics and without diacritics. So we, uh, we have to make sure that we cover both uh, both uh, variants. Um, and also the query generation will uh, discover very frequent uh, Romanian verbs. Um, and that's because the Bing search API will uh, consider words like to be or to have or to do in Romanian that is to be relevant. Uh, and uh, when we, in fact, they are not uh, that relevant. And with this query uh, that was generated in, in this fashion, the, um, the pipeline uh, calls the Bing Search API and retrieves the top 10 most relevant text inputs. Um, and uh, the last step is to um, run a uh, extractive QA word model um, over these text inputs and highlight possible answer to the question. We will see uh, in a minute what the uh, extractive query word model is. Uh, it was. So this is the um, the QA system architecture, very easy, uh, but very effective. Um, yeah, in order to um, uh, be able to um, highlight uh, answers to uh, COVID nineteen related questions, we need a um, a set of questions and answers data set that is going to be uh, used. Uh, uh, by that word model to uh, uh, recognize a, an answer inside of that paragraph. Um, and this, um, this question data set has, uh, as of now, has uh, 185 uh, question and answer pairs. But each question can be, uh, uh, contains uh, synonymic uh, variations for different words. Uh, in uh, this example, I, uh, we only have one. Uh, so one phrase with multiple variants, but if the, if the question is longer, you can have multiple phrases with synonymic variations. Um, we did that in order to um, uh, to uh, cover as, as much as the, uh, of, of the lexical variation of a question uh, um, regarding the COVID-19 topic. Um, and Doing so, we uh, in doing so we can automatically generate a lot of uh, semantically equivalent uh, questions uh, about the same thing. Um, for instance, uh, for that um, for that sentence, we can automatically generate two different formulated uh, questions uh, which are asked uh, which ask the same thing. And um, each answer, uh, each uh, question is paired with, uh, with the answer, which is also highlighted in the um, in the um, provided paragraph. And after uh, automatic expansion, we get a uh, 1,388 uh, question and answer uh, data set, uh, which uh, is easy to be converted into points uh, points or format for the QA. Uh, uh, exactly the way worth uh, fine tuning. Um, the data set was manually created over a course of uh, I think a time period of um, six months last year. Um, uh, we uh, manually collected uh, COVID -like, uh, related uh, documents from the web, uh, and our colleagues just imagine questions about COVID and search for the relevant answer inside that, uh, that corpus for an easy task. Um, but this is, uh, this is how the uh, how the QA data set was uh, constructed. And with this data set, what a extractive QA works, one thing does is uh, it simply um, 
it simply takes the uh, takes a uh, question and a uh, answer pair and uh, trains a uh, transformer model to recognize uh, an uh, answer related to that question in the uh, provided paragraph. Um, and this is basically done with the um, having a basic uh, transformer model uh, stacked with the two uh, two layers on top of the uh, the last uh, uh, representation and um, soft maxing a um, a uh, continuous span of tokens that is uh, representing the answer in the uh, in the paragraph. Uh, this is a, a standard approach. Uh, it's um, referred to a little bit paper. Uh, it, it's not our our doing. Uh, but what we did, we uh, we took this uh, the QA uh, QA data set and uh, um, fine tuned a, a, a bunch of uh, word models that we have for uh, Romanian. Um, some of them are larger, some of them are smaller. So we uh, distilled one in the, um, in the version that we uh, has uh, less parameter than the base the base one. And um, so what we see here, the uh, okay. um, is the accuracy that the uh, that the the bird model gets on the uh, on the dev set uh, of uh, of our QA data set. We have two measures in the uh, exact overlap, so we just count how many times the uh, the bird model is able to find the uh, exact annotated answer uh, in the dev set, and uh, in the F one. Um, we just count the uh, characters that are um, overlap between the uh, detected answer and the annotated answer, and we can do precisionally correct one. And um, <clears throat> the results are looking uh, uh, encouraging. Um, the, uh, it's very encouraging to see that one model can have like seventy three percent exact matching on the uh, on the uh, uh, true answer detection. But this is a bit biased because it's on the uh, on the development set of our QA data set, and uh, we will see how this works in the uh, in the real world. Um, and yes, in order to evaluate the QA system, we uh, developed a new test set. Uh, so each of us uh, thought of 10 to 15 questions uh, that were uh, interesting to us about COVID topics. Um, yeah, we struggled a, <clears throat> a lot with uh, trying to get questions about COVID, but uh, uh, well, each of us had to uh, to come up with 10 or 15 questions um, yeah, independently, and the uh, the answers were uh, uh, retrieved uh, with the uh, using Bing. Um, one thing to mention here is that the <clears throat> Bing may uh, retrieve more than one text input with the uh, containing the version of the correct answer, so uh, all of them are uh, recorded in the, uh, in the test set. Um, and it, uh, it, it's, uh, it is interesting to see how the QA system behaves, because the, like I said, COVID-19 is a very volatile topic, and uh, things are changing rapidly, facts are changing uh, according to research, how effective are the vaccines or does vitamin D helps or not, and all sorts of uh, questions. And it's interesting, interesting to see that uh, that uh, if the QA system is able to help. Uh, to uh, evaluate, we do the uh, exact versus overlap evaluation. So if the QA system highlights the uh, annotated answer, we, we have one. Um, and if, if not, there's an overlap between uh, Q and the QA. Uh, higher the answers, uh, we do the uh, F1 score. And here we see the um, the actual world, uh, real world uh, results. Um, and we have two query generation uh, algorithms. The baseline one is the uh, input question, and the content word extraction is the other one. Uh, obviously, the uh, content word extraction query uh, generation is. Uh, a lot better, and we see that the um, <clears throat> results are um, kind of matching. At least the F one is matching the uh, the training, the uh, fine, the word fine training uh, output, which is uh, 
again encouraging, meaning that the um, user can actually see um, uh, relevant outputs from the uh, highlighter. We have uh, integrated the, uh, with um, our uh, relate uh, language technology portal. Um, this is a, uh, I guess, a screenshot of, of the system where it is just a, a yellow highlight of the, <clears throat> of the most probable answer to make the question. And in conclusion, um, we found out that even with a small uh, data set and uh, with a small purpose to uh, begin with, we can build a, um, a useful, let's say, a useful QA system. Um, and um, it is easily adaptable to other, um, other topics. Um, and certainly it can be uh, used, it can be deployed to any um, uh, public authority website uh, using the same pipeline. And we are in the process of adapting it for the Luxembourg uh, on the topic of public uh, protection. Uh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Okay, thank you.